happiness does not require a penis, even though it's in doesn't the word. What's up, guys? Welcome to the number two podcast. I'm Glenn. I'm Simi. And this episode is going to be shit. shit. Guys, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and press the thumbs up and please share this to all socials because that is how more people get to view this podcast. If you like it, subscribe. If you hate it, subscribe. If you really hate it, thumbs up and comment and let us know how much you hate this. We have 400 spots open on our team. We're looking to fill up our subscriber spots. <laughs> So if you want to be a part of the team, just click buttons. It's completely complimentary at this point. A lot of places when you subscribe, you have to pay money. This, you subscribe, and you're not charged anything. But your time, which is the most valuable resource on the planet. Anyway, today's theme of the podcast was going to be controversial, but that episode has been moved because it is too late at night. So today's theme is going to be... Any guesses? Surprise me. That's your guess? If I were to guess yeah, that's anything. A good, that's a good theme, actually. Put that down. <laughs> like, what's the theme of the episode? Surprise me. <laughs> it would be all about surprises. Have you ever had a surprise birthday party? No, I've never had a birthday party. I literally surprised you with a surprise dinner one time. That was a surprise dinner, not a party. You don't like parties. You're not a party person. Did you like it? Do you even remember it? Did you black it all out? And by black it all out, did you block it all out? The theme of this episode is going to be happiness because we need some more happiness in our lives. So that is going to be the theme. So, Simi, what makes you happy? The most happiest place on earth. Laying in bed? Laying in bed and watching Survivor. That was my guess. While I eat a lot of food that I shouldn't be eating. Would you say that really is your happiest place? Probably, yeah. Is laying in bed watching TV. Well, with you. Really? Yes. Well, that's sweet. It is, really. I know. I saw a TikTok that was like, it was like when we were younger, we were so mean to our grandparents and our parents for like wanting to go to bed early or like coming home from work and like being like they're so lame that they just want to go to bed. I never thought I'd be that person. And now that we're an adult, it's like, God, I can't wait to get home and like do nothing. Yeah. And not talk to anybody. Some days I think like this is the happiness episode. So this is this is for another <laughs> It's the little things in life episode. But some days I want to come home and I wish that like like where we live, we just have like one walk in closet. One closet basically there's no storage. And I wish that Ugh, I didn't not one walk in closet. I know the Disgusting. luxury. <laughs> but it's like I wish that we didn't have anything in it so that I could just go into that closet. And Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. Maybe there'd be like a chair. You want to go in the closet, back into the closet? Just for deep, like deep into the any level of like serenity and solitude in my life. It like does not exist. The only solitude and happiness I really have in my life is like when I'm in a parking lot. If you've ever been to Los Angeles, like parking is like a real issue here. So when you park, you know, you're like paying. It gets very expensive to park in LA. If I'm parked somewhere and I know like the ticket is validated already. This time is for me. Like, <laughs> like I'm going to watch so many fucking TikTok. But, like, I don't have that. You know what I mean? Like, we live in a small apartment. Locking myself in the bathroom. I thought you would have said Disney. Oh, really? Yeah. Disney. I mean. Disney, to me, is not, like, my happy place. It's, like, alternate reality. Yeah. So, it's, like, I don't even think it exists, like, in real life. Like, life is hard. Anyway, so the theme of this episode is happiness. <laughs> um, what else makes you happy? Anytime I put work out there that I've worked on really hard and I mean, even if it's just like a TikTok, you worked on a little TikTok and you post it once I, I guess, post work or put like any type of piece of art or work out there. I think that makes me happy. That's something good. I, yeah, I get a lot of joy out of it. How long have you been putting out work? Here and there. It's a, a lot of times it's not my own. It's like other people's as well. But it's something that I've worked on and. And then, yeah, don't you don't you feel that like when you release like certain like TikToks or things that you post like the does that make you happy or no? Like, do you get like a certain type of gratification from doing that? I don't know. It's kind of weird. You'd think I would. I'm basically like feel nothing anymore. Like the reason I got into art and like theater and stuff 
Yes, because you have like a huge like musical theater background. Well, just theater too, like not just musicals, but like I've actually done more plays than I have musicals. Not by choice, but like just by that's what I get cast in. But it's people that get into the arts usually do it because you can like see the measured impact, the theory of measured impact, where it's like, if I do this, like it educates people and like makes the world a better place. But once you actually get into it, you realize like that exists, but really like capitalism, you know what I mean? (laughs) Like it exists, but I don't know. I think the day that social media was born and algorithms were born, it sort of ruined it because before people would go see plays or musicals or there's only like five stations on the TV. You know what I mean? Like or primetime networks. So like whatever you were shown made an impact because that's what everybody was watching. But now that everything is like so targeted because of marketing, the stuff that is like queer representation or like musicals or like sports, like is only being shown to the people that are into that. You know what I mean? So it's like until somebody makes like a football musical, you know what I mean? Like double edged sword with that, just because, for instance, like, you know, I originally moved to L.A. to pursue dance. I grew up dancing and I love dancing. And and then when you come to L.A., you try to pursue something and then you find out that there's all these gatekeepers within the community and then something like social media comes out and it kind of breaks the mold to where you can be your own creator. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and be able to put yourself out there. And I think like, even for, you know, something like musical theater, and I don't know if this is what you were talking about, but you know, and you've mentioned, mentioned before that college kind of like messed it up for you. You kind of take, took the passion of certain, what you love to do kind of out of it just because school does that to to, to people sometimes, even when people go to acting schools and and things like that. But now with social media, I feel like you could have a platform now that a lot of people didn't have before because there were a lot of gatekeepers who, you know, you couldn't really get a job unless, you know, like this person liked you or, you know, you auditioned a bunch of times. Now it's like the influence that you have kind of matters and Yes, like some people are super talented and some people are just, you know, mediocre and that's fine too. But I think it kind of like evens out the playing field a little bit, which I kind of like. But there is, you know, double edged swords to everything. There's like the good side of social media, there's the bad side of social media. And yeah, what do you think about that? I mean, that makes sense, like playing like devil's advocate for social media. Like it increases people's exposure. But then your thing is like it brings me joy when when i post something and people see my work well if the people that already love your work like are seeing your work like you know what i mean like how much of an impact is it really having you know that's just being like really glass half empty but it's like it's just interesting and that you know it's like they say when you're lost in something it's like go back to your purpose well you know what i mean it's like all people care about is roi And it's like, what's the return on investment? You know, you now you put out a piece of content and it's 30 seconds long and people watch it for 15 seconds and then they never watch it again. Like, and you put all that work into it. You know what I mean? So it's like crazy, you know, and it like doesn't make it any less. True. And it's like, you know, especially when you post things on platforms like, say, YouTube and Obviously, you have to have a certain amount of followers and a certain amount of this to even just be monetized. So technically, if you're a content creator and you're making content and you're putting it on YouTube, you're working for free for a very long time for a very in long order time. to like possibly get monetized because you have this following now that you built like, you know, obviously utilizing a platform, but this company, this conglomerate makes like a guap off of you until you can get there, yeah. you know? I mean, the whole thing's crazy because obviously nobody got into it. I mean, some people probably got into it for money, but I didn't get into the arts for money. Like, yeah, that that was the thing with me is like ever. when I moved to LA, I never moved or, or or even like did it to try to pursue something. And then I think once I tried to pursue something with it, I think that's where it killed it for me, like hardcore. And I was just like, this is not it. And then I lost the passion for dance. But then 
years later when I just got back to basics and I like simplified and was like, why did I ever start dancing? I think that's when I started to fall in love with it again. Cause I was just like, okay, well I'm not pursuing anything anymore. I'm literally just doing this because I just want to take class and I want to like, I don't know, dance and like learn choreography and, and, and movement. And that's when I, I, I feel like, things got a little bit better in in terms of a passion for you know the art that i originally started doing yeah what would you tell somebody that's like 19 that can't afford college that moved to la and who's trying they, to pursue dance or... be a dancer yeah i would say i, I would say diversify just because a, a dancer's career you can only go so far and and there's like an age to where like you know you're you're your, your knees start going out, your hips start hurting. So I would say diversify, like get into acting, like figure out other little art forms, or even if it's just like, maybe, you know, you like, I don't know, filming, or, you know, cause like, that's how I got into like a production and, and editing is that like, I used to film my own like little dance videos on iMovie. And then I was just like, well, I'm, I'm editing it. And I'm like, okay, yeah. once I got to that point, I was like, what do I want to do? I was just like, I kind of like the editing process and I went to like film school for editing for TV and film. Um, but that like led me on this path to like all these other things when I was able to kind of just get out of that mold of just a dancer and kind of like, use all these other tools that I have. Um, so I would say diversify, get into like, acting, get into um, maybe singing or, or music production because you don't necessarily have to be like a great singer to make music you just have to be able to kind of know how to produce it. And then also there's, there's real, real singers that are like vocalists out there that are like, you know, vocal gymnastics people. And then there's also just people who are just recording artists that will put sounds out there and they can hear certain things, you know, and then, and then make music and then you become this recording artist. But I, I feel like there's all these different avenues that when you do do certain niches you kind of don't want to veer from it because you want to be known as that but i think it's important to diversify because i don't know maybe one day you break your back and then you gotta like learn something else you know you you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket i would say yeah that's good advice i mean it's crazy like the biggest what i would say to a 19 year old yeah. is if you look at the people that are well, define success because a lot of people define success as followers on social media. Yeah. Or very they subjective. May or may not have been paid fairly for one job that happened to have been big. And it's usually one job. I can tell you how many people I know booked a movie or TV show and all of a sudden they thought they were going to be Julia Roberts. You know what I mean? And now they work in real estate, you know, and nothing against that. Like, it's an awesome accomplishment, but it's like, you have to define success, you know, and it's not followers like, yeah. On social media, like that would be my advice. And then, yeah. I mean, if you look at the people that are actually successful, like their path is not in line with the advice that you're being given. Like that would be my advice. If you look at people that are actually making money, and doing meaningful work. I'm not talking about people that can't act or yeah. sing and are working for other reasons, which don't even mess your little brain with that. Like when you see those people that want to hire you run, but like it's, you know, the, anyway, the point is the people that are actually succeeding, like their path is not like what the advice says. Like, and I think that's what's so frustrating about advice in the industry is because people will say, well, do this and you need to be like this at the audition and your headshot needs to be like this. Oh, I hate that. Yeah. And you, you know, no gum and don't practice on the sides in the audition and don't do this and don't do this. I mean, companies like that hire lots of dancers, like for cruise ships and other things, like will post best practice videos like that doesn't matter you know what i mean because at the end of the day the decision is being made by a person like it's a people business every business is a people business and they're not they're not factoring in something called nepotism like they're not factoring in yeah i would say you don't know, believe like, everything you hear like don't be so gullible i i 
I agree with that just because so many people have so, so much advice, like even online, they're like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yes, blah, blah, blah. And it's just like, take in what you want to take in and what you, what, what resonates with you, but literally don't believe everything that anyone and everyone says, Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I think that's, I mean, the um, greatest advice ever. I don't know who said it. It's one of your mantras is like, do not listen to people that are not in the arena. Oh yeah. That like, was Brene Brown. <laughs> was that Brene Brown? Like, well, I think it comes from something else, but she, she got it from something else, but she said it and I got it from her. Um, it's the best, but it's it was the like, greatest advice ever. When she said that, it was like, boom, like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. And, and a lot of times you do, or you're taking advice from people who are literally not in the arena, who aren't putting themselves out there, who, you know, aren't doing things like, because a lot of times, you know, ego plays a part in a lot of stuff and, 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 you know, it's like that one saying where it's just like you kind of dim your light sometimes so people don't feel uncomfortable around you. And it's like they're not in the arena doing what you're trying to do. And they're trying to give you advice about something they've never done before yeah. in their life. And like to play devil's advocate, like a lot, there is a lot to be said for experience. Like if somebody's older than you, like young people don't listen, like they never have. Like, it's the tale as old as time. But oh, it's I didn't like listen to shit when I was people younger. <laughs> that are o- people that are older than you, like do have the val- you know, the currency of wisdom, like mm-hmm. even if it's just to protect you, but it's like people don't listen. So that'd be my other advice of like, like you may not have to take the advice, but you could listen because this person, you know, you don't know who they know or what they know or what they've done, like, because you're not asking, you know, like you probably don't even genuinely care, but that's yeah. crazy. I've also been in the situations where they have been like the older crowd of people and you know, the, there is always going to be a younger generation that comes in and they have like a POV and I don't know. It's just like, there is a generation right now or, or that I see sometimes that is an older generation that are gatekeepers. And you know, when things are changing, cause things are always evolving, like, Walt Disney said it best is you either innovate or you die. And sometimes, you know, it just takes, it's like tale as old as time. It's like an older generation saying, you know, when I, when I was your age, we didn't do that. Blah, 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 blah. Like when, when TikTok started happening, I saw everyone uh, that was like older around me, like just like shit on TikTok and, and just talk crap about him. Like who is this Charlie D'Amelio girl, blah, blah, blah. And th- you know, they were like choreographers and stuff. And then all of a sudden, two, three, like after the the pandemic, you just see these choreographers working with all these TikTokers that are like, you know, big now. And they're like being with them. And you're like, you were just literally talking shit about them. Like, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. It's crazy. Well, this podcast is supposed to, this episode is supposed to be about things that make us happy. So art has made us happy in the past. Good and bad. Yeah. What else on this crazy world brings you joy family makes me happy does that yeah all right my new nieces mickey and madison they make me happy having a new baby on the way that makes me happy but i always i also heard that like happiness i don't know where i heard it like it's probably from a tiktok everyone you know has something to say on tiktok but it comes from t- some type of like greek word or something but like it has to do with happen like happiness happens to you so it's not like a real thing you know what i'm saying you have to kind of be content in your life and what you're doing and be okay with just like sitting in the uncomfortableness of maybe not feeling so happy but yeah i think you make your own happiness or yeah you make your own happiness because it's something that happens to you well, you only um, know about happiness because you've experienced the opposite, which is sadness. Yeah. And I've always had the mantra of happiness is a choice. Like, you can choose to be sad. You can choose to be frustrated. You can choose to be negative. Yeah. Because it's just feelings. Like, it's not real. And nothing, ha- nothing physical is happening when you're feeling something other than chemicals in your brain. Yeah. So it's like you have the power to say, like wow, this situation sucks, but, like, I'm going to choose to, like, be at peace. There was this one guy, I think his name was Tommy, older gentleman. Anyway, he had said this one thing, and it resonated with me, and it was just, like, and it changed my mind about how I thought about certain things, and he was just, like, if I can remember it, it, he said, feelings are just feelings. Well, he said it with expletives. He said, feelings are just fucking feelings. 
There's some feelings that you like, and there's some feelings that you don't like, but you have to sit in them, it's whether it's a happy feeling or whether it's a not so happy feeling, learning how to sit in it, feel it and know that this is going to like pass, you're not always going to be in this, like, whatever negative feeling that you're in, you just have to like learn how to kind of navigate it, you know, because they're just feelings like some you like and some you don't like, you know? Yeah. And does that make sense? Yeah. To where like 100%. You really just kind of have to sit in the feelings, even the most uncomfortable feelings in order to just like, I guess, live life sometimes, you know, you're not always going to be happy. Yeah. This is becoming like one of those inspirational <laughs> podcasts that yeah. are kind of weird. That's not this podcast. All right. So this has been our happiness episode. We're both going to give you some advice now. So <laughs> happiness is not acid reflux happiness is not weird bowel movements happiness does not require a penis even though it's in doesn't the word i like that one together. happiness is a happy meal a happy meal is expensive now thanks corporate greed happiness is not the price of happy meals in 2024 happiness <laughs> is money happiness is a lot of money so much money give me all your money i need so much money just so i can pay my basic needs subscribe please subscribe please i'll do anything you have too much give it to me and i will give it to disney and i will return all that shit and pay our bills on time for america happiness is going to bed so good night sleep tight and don't let the bed bugs bite because them roaches bite. Because you got roaches. This has been another episode of the Number Two Podcast. If you <laughs> liked this podcast, don't forget to subscribe. You can watch this podcast on the toilet. You can watch this podcast while you're driving. No, don't do that. You can listen to this podcast while you're driving. On YouTube Music. And anywhere you get your podcast one day. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye.